Hey guys, so today's going to be a recap video where we go over each of the Dodge last call models for 2023. This is the final year of the Charger and Challenger as we know them on the LXLD platform for the Dodge Charger and the LCLA platform for the Challenger, and Dodge is trying to go with a bang with seven special limited edition vehicles for this 2023 model year. Sometimes they're called buzz models or other people call them last call models. I've done individual videos as the models were released, but I wanted to have a summary video that looks at all of them together and their features. At this point, they're all technically released, and I have more footage of most of them, and not just pictures like before. So let's dive into these seven Dodge Charger and Challenger models. We'll start the video off with the Chargers and then move to the Challengers. First is the Dodge Charger Swinger. The Swinger is actually the only one that both the Charger and Challenger received, and it honors the heritage of the Dart Swinger, which was around from 1968 to 1976. The original Dodge Dart Swinger was a member of the Dodge Scat Pack Club and included what were called groovy options, like green on green interior and exterior color combos, gold color accents, and wood panel interior touches. The Charger gets 1,000 units built in RT Scat Pack wide body form, and there are three exterior paint colors available, F8 green, Sublime green, and white knuckle, so the classic green on green Swinger look can be recreated. As for the features, this car gets a scat pack and B badge in the grille, and B fender and deck lid badges. It's got retro swinger rear fender graphics, and 20 by 11 inch gold school wheels, with black 6 piston Brembo brakes beneath them. Inside there are mod grain wood like aluminum interior bezel textures, Napa Alcantara seats with green stitching and a green Dodge Rombi logo, green accent stitching on the console and doors, and a green swinger interior instrument panel badge. Next for the Charger was the Super B. Dodge first introduced this trim from 1968 to 1971, giving customers an ultra-high performance vehicle that could serve as both a daily driver and a weekend warrior at the track or drag strip. They would then bring it back as a limited edition model from 2007 to 2009 and 2012 to 2014 on the Charger. And here it's back again, with just 1,000 being produced. 500 are going to be made in B5 Blue as a scat pack, and the other 500 are in Plum Crazy in scat pack wide body form. Each features Super B badging on the grille and front fender, with graphics on the hood scoop and rear fenders. They're blue with B5 Blue, and white with Plum Crazy. On the SRT hood, there's a black Mopar hood pin kit, and the rear gets SRT black exhaust tips. The scat gets 20 by 95 inch wheels with 275mm drag radials, while the wide body ups it to 18 by 11 inch drag wheels with 315 drag radials like a super stock would have. Both will have an adaptive damping suspension with drag mode and red 4 piston Brembo brakes. Inside the plus group is standard which includes Napa Alcantara seats with the Super B seatback logos and the carbon suede package as well with a suede headliner and carbon fiber interior accents. Next up is the King Daytona and this will be one of the hardest chargers to ever find with just 300 units being produced. The King Daytona pays homage to the Southern Heritage California drag racing scene of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Big Willie Robinson was the founder of the National Brotherhood of Street Racers, which was an organization meant to promote organized drag racing as a way of uniting people of all races and classes and keeping people on the track and off the streets. It would eventually grow to over 80,000 members in 38 states and 9 countries. Big Willie's car was known as the King Daytona, finished in orange. So this King Daytona is matching, finished in Go Mango paint, and is based on the Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody. So that means 807 horsepower and 717 pound-feet of torque from the 6.2 liter Hellcat Hemi V8. 0 to 60 times for this model are around 3.5 seconds, with the quarter mile around 11 seconds. As for the features, to fit under the wide body, there are 20 by 11 inch satin carbon warp speed wheels with matching orange six piston Brembos beneath them. The familiar Daytona satin black rear fender graphics return, but this time they read King Daytona on each side. The hood, roof, and rear spoiler are also finished in satin black. All the exterior badging is done in satin chrome, and Mopar has added a hood pin for a retro touch. Inside, Dodge has put black Napa Alcantara seats that have the orange stitching and Daytona embroidering in the seat backs. These seats are pretty disappointing as you get lower quality seats as opposed to the Laguna leather that's offered in most of the Hellcats, and this is what's supposed to be the cream of the crop of Charger Hellcats. For example, these seats were even offered in vehicles like the 2017 Dodge Charger RT Daytona with just a 5.7 liter Hemi. The orange interior accent stitching continues on the instrument panel, console, steering wheel, and door trim. Carbon fiber interior bezels are added too. The steering wheel is finished in Alcantara as well to match the seats, and there's a King Daytona badge. So now we can move on to the Challenger. The first Challenger announced was the Shakedown. 
This pays tribute to the 2016 Dodge Shakedown Challenger concept. And the 2023 version maybe isn't as cool, but it's still a beautiful Challenger with a Hemi under the hood. There are just 1,000 Shakers being made, 500 in RT Scat Pack form in Destroyer Grey, and another 500 in RT Scat Pack wide body form in Pitch Black. These shakedowns include the Mopar Shaker hood and intake, Shaker decal under the hood, Shaker spoiler graphic and stripe with a red accent, and red 392 fender graphics. And either model will be the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 with the same specs as the Charger counterpart. Shakedowns also get a black Challenger badge and unique RT grill badge. As for the wheels, the regular body scat pack gets 20 by 9.5 inch low gloss black slingshot wheels, while the wide body gets 20 by 11 inch carbon black warp speed wheels. Either model will have red six piston Brembos beneath them. Inside the car has premium black Napa Alcantara seats with red stitching, demonic red seat belts, a shakedown instrument panel badge, and red stitching on the instrument panel, console, steering wheel, and seats. As I said earlier, the only model shared between the two was the Swinger, and there's another 1000 here for the Challenger. This version gets a grill badge and RT widebody grill badge, along with a scat pack and B spoiler badge and B fender badges all finished in gold school. The Challenger also features a shaker hood painted in gold school color. There's also 20 by 11 inch, again, gold school wheels, with black six piston Brembo brakes beneath them, and the same interior as the Charger that we went over. The rarest Challenger Buzz model will be the Black Ghost, with only 300 of these being produced in pitch black, just like the Charger King Daytona. This one pays homage to the original 1970 Black Ghost, which had a 426 Hemi and Gator grain vinyl top. That was a legendary car in the Detroit street racing scene, known to spontaneously appear, destroy the competition, and then leave without a trace. The owner was Godfrey Qualls, but he had to keep his street racing a secret since he was a Detroit police officer and a former paratrooper. The 2023 version is based on the Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody, so again, same specs as the King Daytona. As for the features of the Black Ghost, to fit under the wider body, there are 20 by 11 inch satin carbon warp speed wheels with paint matching black six piston Brembos beneath them. Dodge has added some white rear fender graphics and a black gator skin roof vinyl to try to mimic that original Black Ghost. Up front on the fascia is bright Dodge lettering, along with the Challenger script grille, fender, and spoiler badges. The SRT badge gets finished in midnight metallic. Mopar also added a hood pin kit and a bright fuel filler door for a retro touch. Inside the seats have Laguna leather and Alcantara, and the steering wheel is finished in Alcantara with a red SRT logo. There's also a black ghost instrument panel badge. Other features include real carbon fiber bezels and a dynamic suede headliner. Last but certainly not least was the Demon 170. Somehow this vehicle will end up being the most produced of all these models, with up to 3,000 for Canada and 300 for the US. I won't go over too much detail here in the interest of time, as I've made that separate video and so have hundreds of other YouTubers. The big draw is the insane 1,025 horsepower and 945 pound-feet of torque from the 6.2 liter high output supercharged Hemi V8 when running on E85 gas. On 91 octane, it's got 900 horsepower and 810 pound-feet of torque. Dodge claims that on a fully prepped surface with E85 in the tank, the car is good for a 0-60 to in just 1.66 seconds and the quarter mile in 8.61 seconds at a stunning 151 miles per hour. To get so much power, aside from the block, mostly everything has been upgraded, like new stronger internals including pistons, rod, crank, and bearings, block and head machining for steel studs to help clamp the cylinder heads, and the cylinders can withstand a lot more pressure. There's also a new larger 3 liter supercharger that's used, generating over 21 psi of boost. The lightweight wheels are staggered, 18 by 8 inches front and 17 by 11 inches rear, with 245 and 315 millimeter Mickey Thompson tires. The front wheel flares are gone to try to save more weight, as are the passenger and rear seats, sound insulation, trunk lights and carpet, and more. Drag focus standard features include trans brake 2.0, torque reserve, line lock, launch control, and launch assist. So overall we will see 2,300 of these Charger Buzz models and 5,600 of these Challengers if we include all 7 models. I really love the concept of what Dodge is trying to do here, but I'm a bit disappointed that they didn't go harder on adding more features or even slight performance upgrades. Even things like a cold air intake would add something. The Swinger and Shakedown are both pretty much graphics, badges, and wheel packages that are added on, so just visual features. And Dodge could have done something like the crazy seats that we saw a few years back on the Holy Guacamole Challenger concept. Or at least offer them for certain people that want those kind of things. The Super B is nice with drag radials on both models, 
but the King Daytona and the Black Ghost, again, don't add too much that you couldn't add yourself at a decal shop. Not even new wheels. Dodge did go all out on the Demon 170, so at least that was a really nice way to go out with a bang. So that's the end of this video. What do you guys think of the Buzz models? Which is your favorite, and will you be trying to get your hands on any one of these? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.